back with another video and we're going to do another Q&A because I haven't done one of those in a really long time and I, I've accumulated enough questions to do that on here. So let's get started. So this one says, what did you think about Thai food in America slash Canada compared to Thai food in Thailand? So this is actually kind of funny because I've like never talked about this on here and I talk about this constantly in my personal life and with most Americanized foods, of course, you're going to get a lot of um, differentiation from like what the actual food is, but I find that that happens a lot more with Thai food here. For example, I see Thai food as always being paired with Japanese food because for some reason Americans just love the combination of Thai and Japanese, which to me is like insane because like they're completely different things. And so when I go into a Thai restaurant, it's actually like really funny most of the times because I'm like super judgy and I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. we'll see. Thai food, we'll see. But then when I actually do find a place that is like run by Thai people and has like actual Thai food that I was used to and like it's from my region of Thailand, like I just, I fall in love and like I always want to go there and I have one restaurant in Miami that, um, I know of that's really really good and it's actually run by people in Isan I and it's like called like Bangkok sushi restaurant but again with the sushi America's got an obsession with sushi I swear like obsessed I, also a really big difference is that the Thai spices are toned down a lot like for example I went to this one restaurant one time where I got a Penang curry or for people who know what it is, I got Penang Tao Hu, and um, I asked them um, like how spicy I could get it, and they're like, oh well these are the levels, it's like mild, regular, medium, spicy, and super spicy, and I'm like, I'll get super spicy, because I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's not gonna, yeah, I'm like, that's not gonna, and the waiter's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm sure, and he, kept on like going by my table. He's like, are you positive? Like it's really spicy. And so I ended up like second guessing myself and I was like, okay, let's maybe make it like regular spice. And it had happened at a moment where they'd already made it for me and then they had to remake it. And then they came out and it wasn't spicy enough for me. And it was just so embarrassing. And I was like never doubting myself again. So this next one is from my packing advice video. And it says, I'm heading on exchange to Thailand as well, any other tips? Um, mostly for Thai exchange students, uh, especially for girls, try to dress a little bit more conservatively and just make sure that you know you are never going to get seasons so you don't need to bring anything that's even like slightly colder unless you're going up north then probably being like a couple sweaters but that's going to be enough. Also just make sure that you bring shoes that you can like take on and off really easily because you're going to be doing that a lot and if you have shoes that don't come off super easily you're gonna get really annoyed after a while with them and you're not gonna wear them anymore. Okay so this one is several questions in one and I know that this is definitely one of the um people that I couldn't respond to and I'm still not exactly sure why that is I think it might be because they don't have like a Google Plus account or something like that connected to their email or whatever. But anyway, first question is, uh, what number was Thailand on your list? Uh, Thailand was my third. So um, I already mentioned that in my uh, ROE versus IFS video, but it was my third country um, of choice. And I was actually one of the only exchange students in my district who actually got a country that was even on their top five. And so it's kind of um, not as common as people think to be able to get in the top five. And for certain districts that does happen quite often, but I, all of the situations that I've seen, a lot of people don't get their first choice. But it, then again, I was in Thailand, so it wasn't like one of those like top hitter countries for exchangers, usually like Italy and France and Japan usually that's like people's like first choices and stuff like that and the second question is how many people did you become relatively close to with from Thailand um, I became extremely close with my host sister from my third host family um, I kind of saw her more as a friend than a sister but I see my regular sister more as a friend than a sister 
So it's kind of like the same situation for me. I also became very, very close to I uh, two other girls that um, one was from my school and um, one is a girl that I actually met through um, cosplay that I did in Thailand with my friends who were from Canada. And we met each other like during an event and we became, we all became like really, really close and we're still in contact with her and we're actually gonna be seeing her uh, relatively soon. And then I became pretty close to four other people from my school that I don't talk to necessarily as much um, as the other people. However, I still do talk to them every so often and um, those were all from like school connections. But I mean, I guess that it was just really difficult for the most part because usually the friends that I made in Thailand were actually able to speak English because that's how I was able to connect with them the easiest. And since it's a language that I didn't know prior, I think it was kind of hard for me to connect with people that only spoke Thai. However, two of my friends in my actual class, they didn't speak too much English. And I was able to get pretty close to them, I feel. And um, I don't know, like I, I, I miss everyone there like so much. And as, although I don't, I didn't make as many friends as a lot of other exchange students, I don't really do that in my personal life either. Like I usually have a very small core group of friends and that's like, that's just like my friendship style. So it's actually kind of, for me, a lot of people that I connected with really well in Thailand and I was really happy about that. Okay, so the third question is basically asking me how much time I spent outside doing I either like hiking or um, doing activities or hanging out with my friends. And I would say compared to most exchange students that I knew in my area, probably relatively a lot. Um, the thing is, is with all my Thai host families is that I, it was more important to like be in the house and be with the family and so I tried to do that and so I actually didn't go out nearly as much as I do here like in America but um, when I could I would try to go to the park and I would try to walk with my host family whenever they did exercising. Uh, I would go out almost every single time that there was a festival because my host families knew that that was very important to me. I did spend relatively a good amount of time with my friends uh, outside of school and outside the house. Um, probably more than a lot of other girl exchange students would in my area of Thailand uh, because usually uh, Isan is seen as the part of Thailand with, with the more traditional values and usually the traditional values are more like keep the girl safer in the home. Um, usually it's a little bit more strict for girls and I'm not here to judge anyone's culture. That's just how I was so I went along with it and so I, not nearly as much as I probably would have wanted to, but as um, it says in the question, it kind of goes into the everyone experiences something different, even from city to city. So like you said, it differs. <laughs> and then also earlier on in this message um, that I got, it actually expressed something about being worried about learning Thai um, as opposed to a language that you probably know a little bit more of, as opposed to like Spanish versus Thai. And um, I actually had um, a very similar situation, at least with languages, because I grew up being in Florida, learning Spanish a lot of my entire time during school. And then in high school, I learned American Sign Language, but I had never really experienced learning a non-romantic or like hand gesture language. And so it was very intimidating for me at first to try to deal with the tones, deal with the different um, letters and the different alphabet system and it is very intimidating at first but I think it's more of the mindset than anything else. What it comes down to is that you have to kind of see the good that that makes for in the language. Like for example, I, I never really had a really terrible time with the tones because the tones when you're listening to them it's kind of obvious what the person is trying to say within the context of what they're saying and then for you when you live in the country and you're learning the tones while you're living in the country, it actually just kind of comes naturally, which me and my exchange student friends actually pointed that out and we were like, well, that was, that's actually kind of weird. Like we didn't even like purposely learn that and it's just like, what happened? Uh, there are a couple words that you kind of get confused on. So what I actually would do with that, if that was the situation, if I was trying to say something was close, 
is I would I would like do this and I'd be like glide like it's close I would actually like gesture and that definitely helps and a lot of times if I said it wrong they'd just be like no 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 and I think that that happens a lot of times when you're in a country that has a tonal language and you do not know a tonal language before that a lot of the people around you are not going to like judge you whatsoever for not knowing that they're just going to be happy that you're learning it in the first place which is like I think what anyone should feel like when they're learning a language or knowing someone who is trying to learn the language is it's like as long as you're trying that's all that matters so just keep that in mind however don't go to your first host country not knowing anything I learned that from Thailand don't do that okay so this one's a little bit more heavy but um I thought that this was something that actually was really important for um me to put on a video somewhere so I'm gonna put that here and it's saying, um, I'm going on exchange to Mexico in two months. What I've noticed is that students after exchange basically lose a lot of their friends because they kind of don't understand each other anymore. It scares me a bit. What do you think? This is something that I think a lot of exchange students know about and they're told about, but they never really believe that it's going to happen to them until it happens to them. And I've been very fortunate with that situation where the friends that I had from high school, uh, they definitely are a lot more understanding of cultural values and different cultures in general. And so it's never really happened where we just completely drift apart. But just along with like graduating from high school, people naturally drift apart anyway. But I was really lucky in that sense because that that separation kind of happened all at once because I did a gap year. I've heard that it's like the most difficult to do that when you go back into high school. And I've heard that from every single person I've ever talked to who went back into high school. And they said that it was very difficult for them to try to relate to anyone. And I said that in my last video, like it's very difficult for me to relate to people now. And that has to do more with me making new friends than anything. Okay, last question. I. Uh, that I'm actually going to combine with a little update for you. Um, are you planning to return to Thailand? And yes, I am actually. I will be going on a trip this summer that it's kind of funny um, how it all worked out. But um, I'm gonna be going with Maria to three different countries. Uh, first one, obviously Italy, going to her country and meeting her family and we're going to be spending about uh, 15 days in uh, usually around Tuscany but I know we're also going to go to Pisa because it's like one of the only tourist things that I just really really wanted to do. I wanted to go see the Leading Tower of Pisa. Don't judge me. Then also I know we're going to be going to Milan and of course Florence which is actually funny how it worked out because when I first went on study abroad to Italy, the biggest regret that I had about the entire time is that we didn't have more time in Florence. And it worked out that she lives a half hour away from Florence. And so I'm just so excited. And then we're going to be going back to Thailand. Well, it's her first time in Asia actually. So I'm going to be going back to Thailand and uh, Melanie is going to meet us both in Thailand. And we're going to go to Chumpei, uh, Kankan, um, Phuket, and also Grungte or Bangkok. And that will be about 10 days there and I'm gonna see all my friends and my host family and I'm just so excited. And then I'm finally gonna be moving to Tokyo. Maria's going to be spending about 10 days in Tokyo along with Melanie and I and, how, and while we're kind of setting up our new apartment and um, all that stuff and I'm gonna be vlogging the entire time and I have a lot of ideas about like what to do because I want everyone to try weird foods from those countries and do reaction stuff to that and I'm really excited so yeah that is it so leave any comments you have below any more questions that you want me to answer for my next q and I hope you guys all enjoyed this uh, give it a big thumbs up if you did and uh, I will see you guys all later okay Bye.